In this video, we look at the concept of coefficient of determination, which is part of the AI HL only course in topic four, statistics and probability under the subtopic of bivariate statistics. Okay, there are five key concepts that I'd like to go through in this video. Let's start with number one. What is the coefficient of determination? And we call this the R squared value. Well, I have the definition here, but when we first read through the definition, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm about to read through it now, but then we'll talk about it in the context of this simple example here, and then hopefully it'll click for you. Okay, the R squared value represents how much of the variation in the Y variable or the dependent variable can be explained by the model with X as the input variable. Okay, in this example here, we have a corner shop that sells a variety of goods, one of which is, uh, is ice creams, and the manager notices that the ice cream sales varies throughout the year on a daily basis. Now, the manager thinks that the variation is due to the temperature, and, and you would think that logically. When the temperature is low, not many people eat ice creams. However, when the temperature is high, more ice creams will be sold. So the, so the manager tracks four days with these four temperatures here, and the associated ice cream sales. Okay, let's now go ahead and use our calculator to enter this data and perform a linear regression and have a look at the R squared value that the calculator gives us. Okay, I have the data entered here. I label my first column T for temperature and the second column S for sales, and I have my data entered here. Let's now go ahead and visualize this data and see what the pattern looks like. So we can go control document, so control new page. Let's go add data and statistics. Let's assign our horizontal axis the T variable for time, uh, sorry, for temperature, the vertical axis uh, S for ice cream sold. And we can see here that it follows a, rel a pretty good linear pattern. And with your knowledge of correlation, our two descriptors here would be positive. It's going from low left to high right. And also pretty strong, I would, seem to th I, I, I would think. Let's now overlay the line of regression equation. So we can go menu. Number four, analyze. Number six, regression. And we go show linear MX plus B. And there we have our line of regression equation. And we can see that the data points are pretty close to the line. So therefore this line quite nicely represents the data. Now we can't see the R squared value on this screen. So we need to go back to the spreadsheet. Let's go here, let's go to the top of column C and let's perform another linear regression stat calculation. We go menu, number four, statistics, number one stat calculations, and we'll choose number three, linear regression MX plus B. Our X1 list is T for temp, our Y1 list is S for sales, hit OK, and we get our values here. And you should have done this a few times. If you're up to this video, you would have been doing line of regression equations and correlation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, but this time though, we're looking for the R squared value, which happens to just be the square of the correlation, by the way. So this value here is 0 0.93. Let's actually just write that down on our screen. So here we have it here. So we have our R squared value. We have found it. Let's now interpret it. This 0 0.93, what it means is 93% of the variation in the ice cream sold, see how it's varying? It's, it's sometimes low, it's, it's 10, sometimes it's high. 93% of that variation can be explained by the variation in our input variable here, which is the temperature, which is a pretty high number. So 93%, only 7% of the variation can be explained by other variables, such as say, maybe the day of the week, or maybe the month of the year, depending on sort of pay cycles. There could be a number of different variables, but overwhelmingly 93% of the variation in ice cream sold in this example can be explained by the temperature. Now, sometimes you might get an R squared value of say 0.5, and that would mean that only 50% of the variation in your dependent variable, your output variable, could be explained by the input variable. So that's what the R squared value means. It's a, it's a prediction, it's a measure of the prediction power of your model. So how much of the variation in the output can be explained by your model and the independent variable that you chose? Okay, we have now talked through the first two key, key concepts. Let's, let's now move to key concepts three, four, and five. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here because it's easy to kind of lose yourself in the proof. Uh, if you want to explore the proofs further, I recommend going to your textbook. I'm just gonna try to explain these at an intuitive and, and a conceptual point of view. Okay, let's talk about number three, the residual sum of squares. When your calculator 
gave you this line of regression equation, and up until now, you would usually be using your calculator to find the values for M and for C, and then looking at the R value. But we haven't really thought through, well, how does the calculator actually give us this best line of best fit? Well, the way that the calculator does it is by minimizing what's called the residual sum of squares. So if we look at this diagram here, and I just have this here because the data points are a little bit further away from the line, so I can, I can make it a little bit clearer. I have four data points and I have the line of regression equation. The distance between the data point and the line are called residuals. So in this case here for data point one, I'm gonna have this green line here and this is the y value of the actual data point, we'll call it y1. And this value here, we call this y1 hat, is what the data is, is what the y value of the data point should have been if the data point lied exactly on the line. And this length here is called the residual. So what the calculator is doing is trying to minimize the sum of the residuals of all the data points. But the calculator can't add up all the residuals just as is because we have some positive residuals and some negative residuals. So we're gonna be adding positive and negative numbers and it would actually always add to zero. So what it does instead is to add the squares of the residuals. That way all the numbers are positive. So it gets this R1 value, this length, it squares it, it adds it to the square of R2, it adds it to the square of R3 and R4. And then it gets some number, and we call that number SSR, the residual sum of squares. And the line of best fit will be the line that minimizes this SSR. Now, if the SSR is zero, that would mean that all the data points lie perfectly on the line, and therefore the line of best fit perfectly um, represents the data. But if the SSR is not zero and it's some number, the question therefore is, well, what does that number mean? It might be say 0.5, it could be one, it could be four. Well, what we do is we compare it against this thing called the total sum of squares. And what it is, and I'll choose red for this, we just take the averages of the y's and we draw a horizontal line. I'll just draw it about here. So let's call that y bar, the averages of all the y, uh, of all the y values. So for example, in our example here, it would just be the average of the ice cream sold, so roughly about 40, 40 or so, somewhere about here. And the total sum of squares is actually the same concept, it's squaring the length, but now from the average line to the data points. So it's all of these lengths here, and likewise we square them so that we are adding positive numbers together. And we call that the SST. So in terms of interpreting what the SSR value, uh, the size of that number, whether it's small or big, we compare it against the SST. And actually the R squared value can be found by this calculation here. One subtract the SSR on the SST. Now there's a little bit more information underneath that about sort of the fractions and, and, and what it kind of means, but I'm not gonna go through that video here. I recommend going to your textbook if you wanna explore that further. But the more intuitive concept is, okay, we want to be minimizing the residual sum of squares. The size of that number its meaning is compared to the total sum of squares, and then the R squared value is actually one subtract this ratio here. But in exam questions, it's, it's unlikely you'll be asked to find the R squared value by hand. Uh, pretty much all the time, you'll be able to use your calculator to find the R squared value. But it's important to remember or to understand and, and, and to intuitively understand these concepts here because some questions may ask to calculate the SSR or compare it against the SST, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that was an introduction to the coefficient of determination. These types of questions are gonna appear in bivariate statistics questions and often in nonlinear bivariate statistics questions. So uh, patterns that follow maybe an exponential model or a logarithmic model or a quadratic model and we need to assess the, uh, the, the fit of the model in comparison to the data. So it's important to understand how to explain this value. Okay, I recommend going and practicing some of the question bank questions in the bivariate statistics section of the RV question banks.